In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to duplicate an instance objects, but it's probably going to be a very short lesson because it's pretty straightforward. To duplicate something or make an exact copy of it, all we need to do is select an object and go to Object and Duplicate Objects. That's going to jump us right into the move mode of this newly created object. So you can see my cursor changed and the cube is highlighted in white. And if I move my cursor around, then it's going to move the new object. And then I can also left click to confirm or hit enter. If we look in the menu, in the object menu, the hotkey for that is shift D. So let's practice that. Let's select an object, hit shift D. That'll jump us right into the move mode of that newly created object. And we can move this somewhere else, left click and confirm. And we can do that for as many objects as we want. I'll box select all three of these cubes, hit Shift D, move them off to the right, and left click to confirm. There might be some cases in which you don't actually want to move the newly created object. And if that's the case, you can always hit Escape after you've duplicated it. So for example, if we want to create a new cube here, but keep it in the exact same spot as the original one, I can just hit Shift D. And even if I move my mouse around a little bit, I can just hit the Escape key, and that'll snap it right back. So it looks like we canceled the entire thing, including the duplication, but that's not actually true. We now just have two cubes laying directly on top of each other. That's one of the things that I see tripping up new Blender users is the difference between canceling an operation and canceling the movement of an operation. When you hit escape, it just cancels the movement. So if I hit G now, you can see that we actually still have two cubes here. As we can see in the outliner, all of these cubes are now separate objects, and if we expand them, we can see that they all have separate object data as well. The first one is named cube, and its data is named cube. The second one is cube.001, and the data is cube.001 as well. This means that if we hit tab to go into edit mode, and let's just edit some of these vertices here, I'll select them, hit G to move, move those off to the side, hit tab to go into object mode. You can see that this, of course, has not changed any of our other objects. So a duplicate is a fully independent copy. This is different from an instance where all of the object data is going to be linked. So for that, let me go ahead and delete all these. I'll just shift and left click them and then hit delete on my keyboard and select our original cube again. In the outliner, notice how it's named cube and how the mesh data is also named cube. Now, if we go to object and instead of choosing duplicate objects, let's choose duplicate linked. That's gonna do an apparently similar operation and it will be placed the exact same way and in the outliner, we also have a cube.001. So, so far, it seems like everything has been exactly the same as a regular duplicate. But if we expand cube.001, we'll see that it's actually using the same object data as the one above it. They're both named cube. So now we have two separate objects sharing the exact same data. And this is really interesting because we can, you know, move one and rotate it around. But as soon as we get into edit mode, I'll hit tab. And you'll notice that both of them jumped into edit mode, even though only one of them was selected. I can select some vertices here and I'll just move them up along the Z axis and you'll see that it's changing on both objects at the same time. That's because that mesh data is shared between both of these objects. What makes this really cool though is that in object mode, we can change this however we want. If we switch over to a local orientation and go to our move tool, you can see that they can have different orientations, but they can also have different scales as well. So I can hit S and X and scale this one differently or maybe just hit S and make it way bigger and so now they look visually different, but that's just because the object properties are different. The actual mesh data is still shared in between them. So if I hit tab to go into edit mode and edit this vertex here, I'll just hit G and move it down and off to the side a little bit. You can see that it's changing all of the other instances in proportion. I'll hit tab to go back into object mode now. Now, as a beginner, you probably won't need to use instances right away, but I think they're really helpful to know about because they're way more memory efficient than a duplicate you can render way more instances than you can duplicates. Let me go ahead and reset my scene here just by deleting these two objects, and then I'll hit Shift A, Mesh, and Cube, and let's see how this works in edit mode as well. So if I hit Tab to go into edit mode, we can also duplicate any of our components. If I select Vertex and hit Shift D, it'll duplicate that vertex and I can place that wherever I want. If I want to select an edge, I can either go into edge select mode or just select the two vertices that are on either end, and then hit Shift D, and that'll duplicate that edge. In the same way, I can duplicate a face by selecting all four of the vertices, hitting Shift D, and duplicating that and placing it wherever. This is going to become a really helpful command because now you can just model one piece, hit Shift D, and instead of having to model that piece all over again, just use the same one over and over. 
Our vertices, edges, and faces don't contain any sub data blocks though, so there is no duplicate linked here in edit mode. It's just shift D to duplicate. Now these same rules apply for non-mesh objects as well. I'll go ahead and delete this example, and let's look at a camera. If I go to the camera data, and then hit shift D to duplicate this camera over, then I can change the focal length of this one independent of the other one. But if I wanted them to stay the same, I'll go ahead and delete this camera, take the original one, and this time I'll use an Alt D, which is the hotkey for object and duplicate linked. So I'll hit Alt D, move that over, and now if I change the focal length, it'll change it for both of them at the same time. This same idea applies to lights and all other different types of objects in Blender.